Disney will be adding three new ships to the Disney Cruise Line fleet, and apparently they're going to have more innovation, more technologies, spectacular entertainment, and more Disney stories and characters than ever before. I don't know about you, but that's something that I'm very excited about. Now that I really love the cruise lines and I've had a chance to really appreciate what they are, I cannot tell you how excited I am for these new ships that will be released soon. The Disney Parks blog has released a few images of what's to come. Nothing specific, but a few little images here and a render, which was really, really cool. I'm looking forward to seeing what they have in store. But today, I wanted to go over some of the hopes, thoughts, and different destinations that I think, and these are only predictions and rumors that the Disney Cruise Line's new ships might be going to. First and foremost, we know that these three new ships will be released in 2021, 2022, and 2023. The new ships will be powered by liquefied natural gas, and they will be a little bit larger, not that much larger, but a little bit larger than the dream and fantasy that are currently in the fleet. From the most recent Disney Parks blog post, they told us how they'll be bringing Disney's iconic stories to the ships, and they also kind of talked around, and I think this kind of confirmed Confirms that there'll be more Marvel and Star Wars on these new ships. But again, we'll have to wait and see because that wasn't like totally confirmed. They kind of like talked it around a little bit. Each new ship will be approximately 140,000 gross tons, which is slightly larger than the Dream and Fantasy, and they're planning 1,250 guest staterooms in each ship. But that's about it that Disney has confirmed at this point, so I'm sure we'll hear more soon. But let's go over some of those rumors and speculation that I've been hearing about these new ships. At the time of filming, the Disney cruise ships go to many different destinations, including including Alaska, the Bahamas, Bermuda, the California coast, Canada, Caribbean, Europe, Mexico, Panama Canal, and transatlantic. With such a great list of destinations, the question comes up, where will they be going to with these new ships? I've read many different rumors and speculations about this. Some feel that they'll continue to go to the same destinations, but more frequently. Others think that there might be some new destinations in store, and I've heard some, like maybe the Boston, Canada coast, perhaps to the UK and England, or maybe they'll go to Japan and Asia, or what I'm hoping for, I really, really hope, for Hawaii. I would love to see a Hawaii Disney cruise. I know they used to do it, but at the time of filming, there are none, so I hope they do more of that. There are a lot of different ideas that we have that Disney might have up their sleeves. Now, if Disney does decide to bring us some new destinations, and that is still just a rumor, we don't know for sure, do I think that they'll use the newest ships for these new destinations? Not necessarily, not right away anyway. I, that's, I predict that they'll use the newer ships for that bohemian three-night, four-night adventure that the Dream currently does, and then maybe use the Dream for some of these new destinations. That's just a prediction. I don't know. We're all just guessing here. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Where do you think these new ships might go? These new ships are not scheduled for release for a few years, so we won't be learning their names for a long, long time. They usually don't announce the names until the naming ceremony. So, what do I think these new names could be? Keep in mind, I'm just guessing here. Please let me know what you you think in the comments below, but maybe something like the Dream Finder, or maybe they'll start naming them after characters like the Mickey Ship or the Mini Ship. I'm not sure. There's a lot of different names that they can choose from. I'm sure they'll have fun picking what the next ship's name will be. Now, when I was thinking about these new ships, I kept thinking to myself, why doesn't Disney make these ships the mega class size that other companies do? And I had to do some research because I've only been on two Disney cruises myself, and I found out that there are a lot of advantages to having a smaller ship. First and foremost, there's less distance to walk, so you can go from one side of the ship to the other, and it doesn't take too, too long. On these mega ships, apparently it can take 10 or 20 minutes to go all the way around these humongous ships. Another major advantage to having a smaller ship is that really one-on-one -on -one service, whether it's at the dining locations, or your mouse keeper, or just someone you met as you're walking around meeting the characters, you really have the opportunity to connect with the crew and cast members. And I've got to tell you, it's a wonderful experience to make new friends. Magic John show. Cassidy, Magic. Show. It's gonna be great. There's Robert. He's also and then Thomas too. We're both here. Everybody's here. There you go. Kelly is awesome on our cruise. Thanks for all you do, Kelly. And there's Brandon, star of the show, right there. I'm going to miss seeing you every day. Okay, we'll see you on the next cruise.
Along with those advantages, I read about many others like the general feel of the ship. It feels less crowded, less congested. You have lower lines for just about everything from meeting those characters to the ice cream, and getting on and off the ship is easier because there's less people in line with you. And don't forget, Castaway Key on a smaller ship always feels less crowded. So they didn't want to increase the size too much, so Castaway Key doesn't feel, you know, congested. So that's a great, great thing. Now the Disney Parks blog has mentioned a new generation of innovation and reimagining what it means to be in the cruise industry once again. Disney, what does that mean? I really want to know. Now I have been doing my homework and read about all of these cool like skydiving simulators and surf simulators and bumper cars on other ships. So I'm wondering, Disney, you're planning on reimagining what it means to be on a cruise ship. I cannot wait to see what you have in store for us. I am sure I'm going to be amazed. And now the big question that was on my mind anyway, when these new ships come out, is there any chance, any possibility that the prices for the cruises will come down at least a little bit? I'm gonna be hopefully optimistic and say maybe there's a chance of like a slight decrease in cost for some of those Bahamian cruises. But if I had to guess, considering how profitable the cruises are and how many people really enjoy them and how they fill up the ships almost every time, I, I don't think so. I really don't. Especially in the newer ships, I'd imagine they might even charge more to be on the latest, greatest ship. So I, I really don't know. I, I hope so. I hope so. That's all I can say. But if I had to guess, I, I doubt it. Disney, I'll make you a deal. If you lower the prices on these cruises, I'm going to go on more of them. How, how does that sound? It sounds like a good deal, right? There's no doubt there is a lot of magic in store for the Disney Cruise Line and the new vessels coming our way in 2021, 2022, and 2023. Let me know what you are most excited about. If you have any predictions about what might be coming, let me know in the comments below. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much for being a part of the magic with me. Until next time, have a magical day. Now, if you haven't noticed, there was a small upgrade to the studio. You can now keep track of how many cruises I've been on. There's one for the first cruise. There's one for the second. I'm hoping that that lanyard chain continues to grow.